I am not talking here out of both sides of my mouth. I insist on recognizing the importance of the family, acknowledging the decline of structure of family amongst African Americans, and owning the consequences of that decline in terms of its contribution to racial inequality. But I'm also not a moral infant. I know that having recognized those social connections and the role that they play in persisting inequality, I have not solve the problem of what is the right thing to do for the society as a whole. How a diverse society answers the question, who are we, is a fundamentally significant issue. Who are we? Whose country is it? When we talk about crime, violence, school failure, urban decay, or family life for that matter, are these matters in the back of our mind that we understand as us and them? Because if it's us against them, anything is possible. It becomes possible, for example, to say about those people languishing in the ghettos of our great cities, that's not my country. That's not me. Those aren't my people. That's some third world thing or whatever. I mention this because we're talking about family life. We're talking about intimate personal relations. I'm arguing that inequality to some degree is the consequence of a failure or a dysfunction in the family lives of black people. I'm a black person myself. I don't take any pleasure in making this argument. I feel compelled to make it. But in doing so, I don't want to join a chorus of critics who stand on the outside and point fingers at those people and talk about their deficiencies. I don't want to be a hypocritical moralist who wags my finger in their faces and tell them that they should live, quote, better, close quote. But I do want to be a realist. I don't want to look away from the consequences of the way in which many of them are, as a matter of fact, living. In doing so, however, I don't want to give license to those who want to wipe their hands of the matter, turn their backs on these people who need our help, uh, and uh, simply go on about their business. And so that's why I asked the question, who are we here in America? My point is that these problems, including the problems of African American family life, are quintessentially an American affair, not simply an, an, a measure of the inadequacy of black culture. They reflect upon our social inadequacy, I wish to argue. And by our, I mean all of us. For example, much of the decline in uh, the structure of African American family, I say decline because I mean the rise of out of wed like birth and the decline in the prevalence of husband, wife, Households, much of that decline, I think, can be laid at the feet of the consequences of American welfare policy, which has created incentives uh, for family dissolution. Much of it, I think, could be laid at the feet of drifts in American culture, in which the uh, virtues of, uh, of uh, monogamous and uh, husband-wife families has declined amongst all groups, reflected in the popular media and so forth. Black people in the United States are not on an island. They live integrated within the larger social fabric. And so patterns of behavior that we see among them are not simply on them. They are also, to some degree, on us. This is what I mean when, being an economist, I nevertheless insist on placing relations before transactions. What I am talking about now, in other words, is the American story, not just the Black American story. Let me conclude. Consider the poor central city dwellers who now make up maybe a quarter of the Black American population. The dysfunctional behavior of many in this uh, population is a big part of the problem here. So conservatives' demand for greater personal responsibility in these quarters is necessary and proper. And yet, confronted with the despair, violence, and self-destructive folly of so many people, is it, moral, it is morally and intellectually superficial in the extreme to argue, as many have done, that those people should just get their acts together like many of the poor immigrants. If they did, we wouldn't have such a horrific problem in our cities. To the contrary, I would say, any morally astute response to the social pathology of American history's losers should conclude that while we cannot change our ignoble past, we need not and must not be indifferent to the contemporary consequences of it. Their culture may be implicated in their difficulties, but then so too is our culture complicit in their troubles. We, and I mean all Americans, bear collective responsibility for the form and the texture of our society's social relations. 
And racial discrimination and racial segregation is a part of that structure and texture. It is also a part of the foundation for racial inequality in the country. I am not talking here out of both sides of my mouth. I insist on recognizing the importance of the family, acknowledging the decline of structure of family amongst African Americans, and owning the consequences of that decline in terms of its contribution to racial inequality. But I'm also not a moral infant. I know that having recognized those social connections and the role that they play in persisting inequality, I have not solved the problem of what is the right thing to do for the society as a whole. We need to support stronger African-American families. We need to provide the kind of support that people need in order to be able to do their duty and, do their, and fulfill their responsibilities in raising their children. But we need also to insist without equivocation that responsible parenting is the foundation for prosperity in any society, including in this one, and that responsible African-American parenting is an absolute essential prerequisite for narrowing and ultimately eliminating the racial inequality gap in America.